Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea, and welcome back to a high-level game of StarCraft 2 today in the top right spawning as our Red Terran player playing for the Shopify Rebellion. It is indeed beyond. And in the bottom left here of Star Child, we have Solar playing for Team Onsite Gaming. Star Child, I hear all of you ask. Yes, Star Child, one of the maps of the TLM C17, the Team Liquid Map Contest. Number 17, yes, the 17th edition. And Star Child is a, uh, yeah, is, is one of the many maps that we have seen there. A map with a very open third base, if you could consider this a third base. Or is this the third? I think this is the third. I want to go for a line third here, I think. Fifth base looks a little bit difficult to keep as well. Lots of nice locations for potential tank pushes. There's a bunch of rocks which aren't very helpful to Zerg. This is, oh my god. Double rich Vespine geyser. The Zerg Union tanks whoever built this map. Holy crap. The only thing missing is some gold minerals and we're in Zerg paradise. Except I guess the rest of the map layout because that is relatively... It feels good for them. Right, having rocks everywhere, like some line of sight blockers, some random cliffs. Looks like a, a large map as well, though I'm not aware of the actual rush distance. Beyond opening up with a CC first, so a very economical opener, and follows it up with two barracks. Now, this has been his opener of choice for a little while now. A no scout double CC start, and this allows him to get a marine into reactor tech lab, and then some very fast, heavy marine action coming out of him completely kind of skipping that hellion phase which a lot of terrans like and a lot of terrans feel like that is where they really can make the difference but beyond says no actually uh, where i make the difference is with my marine micros with my decision making so we see the reactor go down and we'll see the tech lab start over here this has really just been his standard opener um how is this safe you might ask well i can answer that for you it is not so sometimes he'll build a blind bunker and that makes it safe so he's basically saying okay if you want to roach rush me that's completely fine but i'm going to be building a blind bunker 45 percent of my games if i have that blind bunker you're going to be behind and that is basically his his kind of like his zerg roach rush deterrent and i kind of like it i think stuff like that generally works well if you mix it in often enough people are afraid of it especially if you do it random people really underestimate the power of making of doing things randomly uh, for a while what i would do is i would have a couple of build orders that i feel comfortable with and then i just roll the dice and uh, whatever the dice would tell me to do i would do that's basically it and it makes it really difficult for your opponent to predict what you're going to be playing because you don't know what you'll be playing yet now of course you could say well on certain maps certain builds are better exactly but you don't always want to do the exact same build on the exact same map because in that case you're going to be very predictable which is a bad thing this is some nice uh terrain by the way a little bit of uh smoke some what is it pink purple smoke coming out of there lots of depots being built here in front this is going to be a 2-1-1 opener from two bases but with a cc first which means that uh, the eco is just slightly better than it usually would be there is no initial scouting with the reaper though which you know does suck uh, also no aggression with that reaper it means that solar also just basically has a free early game so his creep is going to get us but he's basically playing against the ai right um, all that beyond has done so far is patrol a marine over here and i think he just managed to kill half a link so Congratulations, but that really is about it. Roach Warren is on the way right now, so it seems that Solar wants to go the Roach route. And the Roach route is a route that can be walked. But against a player like Beyond, not sure if that's the best thing. He is very keen on his tanks. Loves to skip the, the mines for as long as possible. And if he can sit back on a high tank count, he's going to be a very happy camper. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Imagine being this overlord. <laughs> so you can't fly away anymore. Oh no. <laughs> Little idiot stuck on top of the rock. Yeah, you're gonna splatter. So it gets uh, popped like a little balloon. We have a bunch of links on the way already. There's a bunch of links out as well, and there's eight queens. Uh, that, that really is a lot of defensive power. Yes, this uh, creature is going to get taken out. No fourth base yet, which means it can't be cancelled either. That's the, the type of brilliant thinking I need in my life as well. Can't lose a fort if you never start one. Of course, it does suck when you actually want to get some economy going, though. So, 
maybe not the most ideal plan in the world. First four roaches are on the way. Evo Chamber coming out as well as we have a layer in production. And the uh, 30C is on the way here for Beyond. Ooh. Almost losing a medevac there. Uh oh, could still lose it. Actually completely stopped controlling. Accidentally clicked on the rocks. Got kind of lucky there that Solar didn't continue chasing because he actually would have lost that medevac. Now, double eBays are being produced behind this. We have our... I think that's our second tank, right? Oh my god, it's our third tank already. That's a, a decent chunk of tanks here. Pretty cool to see. Now, this isn't really a two-base all-in, but it kind of is a two-base all-in. I mean, it was three racks before the third CC. <coughs> this is as, as all-in as it's really going to get. It also has no upgrades whatsoever, so this is a, a powerful push-out. Solar is prepared for it with the Roaches, with the Ravagers. Roaches are often the best call against this type of build. And perhaps that's the reason why we saw a Roach Warren go down. Because Solar was aware of what's what was going to happen. Uh, Beyond now moving across the map only with two tanks. So leaving one tank at home. Helping uh, starting saturation at this third base, I guess, to a certain extent. And now... Ooh, look at that. Beyond wants to use... I thought he wanted to use those rocks, but instead is going to move towards the far right. There's still no fourth base, though. This is all being done on three bases. All of it. And I'm okay with it as well for Solar, because he's ahead. He's just up 40 supply for no real reason. Um, I think Beyond just saw the lack of that fourth base, and is like, hey, what's the point, really? Why would I go there? Doesn't make any sense. So he's going to try and clear some creep in the middle, keeping the tanks in the medevacs. I like that. You don't want to reset your own tank count for no reason. I don't think Beyond has spotted the massive roach count yet, but the moment he does, he's going to be very happy with his decision to keep his tanks alive. Because losing two tanks right now, while you're being basically roach pushed, or are most likely going to get roach pushed soon, yeah, that would suck. There's just a lot of roaches out. That's dangerous. 22 roaches, 8 ravagers. Some, some proper mass roaching going on there. You don't see that all that often anymore. But then again, things you don't see that often sometimes, you know, it can provide a lot of strength because people aren't quite ready for it anymore. This position is crazy, by the way. Look at that. These tanks are never going to get killed. It's actually really, really nice positioning. I think Beyond just kind of noted that position in his head right now. It's like, all right, I think I'm done here. I think I'm just going to go back home. These uh, Marines are walking into some rocks. The Ravagers take out some of these rocks. And it feels like Solar is setting up for a massive attack right now. 1-1 one, one is finishing up here for Beyond. Infestation pit is on the way. Solar going up to 74 workers. But the fourth base isn't even done yet. Second factory is already on the way. 16 marines start moving out. There's four tanks on the low ground. There's one tank on the high ground. There is a, a second factory coming in. There's a fourth command center coming in. I think defensively, this is really, really tight. Like, this is... This, I, th I think this is strong. This is good. This is solid. And then you have this as kind of your, like your counter-attack. So the moment Solar decides to attack, that could be really difficult for him. Now this scan confirms that there is a hive on the way. and sees Banelings kind of waddling in towards the main as well. We have a drop heading towards the far left side of the map as well. Creep spread is honestly extremely disappointing out of Solar. He has good mechanics, but he isn't showing them yet so far this game. Because, well, nothing really has happened aggressively out of Beyond and... There's hardly any creep. I mean, four creep tumors have gone down in a nine-minute game. And we're not even halfway across the map. I've seen Raynor lose 12 creep tumors in the first five minutes and be knocking at the third base at the eight-minute mark. Like, this is just a kind of poor mechanically out of Solar, honestly. And I'm disappointed by that. I, I really rate him as one of the, the highest, like, very high-level mechanical players. Uh, even amongst the top players. I, I really think his mechanics are are extraordinary, but he's not showing it whatsoever this game. Drop is going to enter the main base as well. At the same time, a nice push coming towards the bottom side with six tanks in position. I'm not quite sure if, if, if Solar is exactly ready for this. There are no Vipers out. Skipping Vipers to straight away go into Ultra Disk might have been a mistake. I mean, there's plenty of gas available, so I'm not even sure why Solar would do that. Probably believes that he can just hold this. Uh, tanks in the back are just dealing a lot of damage. Only two medevacs means that these units are slow at getting healed up. But hey, this is a scary position right here. First Viper is on the way right now after Solar realized what's going on. And I think that's the correct call. Plus one on the melee. Adrenal glands uh, all about to finish up as the fourth base has flown over right now for Beyond. As he has taken out a fifth base. Two more command centers coming in as well. And a, a Ghost Academy I think is going to be pretty imminent.
Good flank setup here out of Solar. Not a lot of Marines here. The reinforcements not coming in in time. As Tutu hasn't finished yet either. Banelings are going to get sniped. Right side army gets picked up. But Beyond is going to continue pushing on. Ravagers try some zoning biles. Will not quite succeed in that. Are there concussive shells? No, we do not have those quite yet. And there are four Marauders being produced at a time. And there's still four tanks around as well. Five tanks in total with one being uh, you know, just chilling somewhat at home. Bion actually smells blood in the water and thinks he can continue pushing on. With this one Viper out already, I'm not entirely sure about that. But I do uh, I do enjoy the, the aggressive spirit here that Bion is in. Rather this than seeing some camping game coming out of him. Which he's also fairly capable of. This fight still will be on creep, despite the creep tumors having disappeared a while ago already. Double tanks are going to be biled down. Poor positioning out of our Korean Terran player, who should not have lost all of those tanks with the same uh, set of biles, obviously. That is always going to be considered a mistake. I do like this rotation, moving towards the left side. Can get up this, this, this weird position, which I'm not even sure why this is in the game, but this seems insanely broken for Terran. While at the same time dropping towards the left side with a triple marine drop, I really, really like this here out of Beyond. Oh, I don't actually like this, but I think he should have just put the tanks up here, no? That seems like a, a way scarier position to fight against. This almost seems like a kind of a lazy position here for Beyond. I mean, it's still good, don't get me wrong. It's on a ramp, but it's a relatively large ramp that you can just bust up on. Yeah, and Solar's going to get up there and deal a lot of damage. Right side Marines are taking out a lot of the Queens. No drones have fallen yet. Can everything get picked up? The answer is meh. It could have probably, but beyond not with the, the quickest fingers there. This tank isn't sieged up either. More Marauders are coming in right now. Tank sieging up. As the Marauders move back, Stim gets used. Lynx eventually will get cleaned up and so will these Medivacs. So they have to start boosting back home. No 3-3 starting yet, as Ghosts have priority over those upgrades for some reason. But there are already two extra command centers. I'd love to see another base being added so that... Oh, here we go. So that he can eventually expand towards that fifth planetary, or that fifth base, which is going to turn into a planetary. Problem is, is that a fifth base is just hard to hold on this map. I think Bian realized that as well, and he's going to start dropping that fifth base that Solar took on the top side. But it's just so isolated... Uh, kind of forcing a low eco style here out of the Zerg player. 76 workers only. Here comes Solar pushing in into this base. Ghost are here defensively. Not too many tanks um, going back. As this other command center also gets taken out. Probably need to lift one of these orbitals right now towards the fourth base. Uh, fifth base up top also gets taken out and a couple of drones will end up falling. There's still a lot of marines and marauders. Three roaches aren't going to be enough. Bottom side base is being constructed or is being morphed in. Uh, that's also somewhat important. I think if you look at this, the, the, the current state of the game, objectively, you see a Terran that has, you know, a base that can fly over. and still has another backup base as well. Uh, decent eco, nice upgrades coming in, tacking into Ghost already, really working towards that late game with a solid defensive setup. While if you think about what Solar is doing here, I mean, he is on Ultras, which is nice. He has two Vipers, but... A large portion of this army is still Ravagers as well, which are practically useless. There's 75 links, which are okay, but not super brilliant. But it's not some crazy late game army, I feel like. There's no Infestors, there's no Lurkers. I don't think we're heading into Lurkers. The eco just isn't great. Like, if you're playing with such a kind of a primitive army, like very Lingbane heavy, you want to do that on extremely high eco while continuously bouncing on your opponent to trade against other units because you don't want to fight a maxed out army against ghost tank if all you have is ling bane it just doesn't work like that like tech matters in this game uh, especially in this matchup it, it, it matters oh. marauders go to tank a lot of these uh, bane link shots some nice uh, engagements there Twelve thousand resources lost on the side of Pion against 17,600 resources lost on the side of solar and solar is uh well, what is he doing actually here looking for an attack but he just can't and there's 15 ghosts good luck with your attack mate solar needs to pounce on a fifth base like whenever a fifth base gets uh, constructed he needs to go for it the, the problem is is that he just doesn't have that much money he needs to take good fights as well so he he needs to oh my god does this engage no way ah, this can be good right i mean there's no planetary which is kind of nice but there's so many tanks here, and the ghost staying alive as well. 
Um, six ghosts ended up falling. 17 SCVs went down. But the army probably just stayed alive during all of this. Uh-oh. A couple of links still going ham in this mineral line. This actually allows Beyond to now push out and to establish this fifth base. Not a huge fan of that. For a solar here, building nine corruptors. But this is ill-advised tech choice. I'm just thinking what the, the purpose could be for the corruptors right now. Like taking out Metavax is nice, but is that really what you want to be focusing on at this point? Maybe it is. I'm curious how that will. I, in my mind, this is a mistake. But Solar is obviously a a way more achieved Zerg player than I am, so he has to have a reason. Now, this reason doesn't necessarily need to be good, but maybe he believes he needs it against potential Liberators soon, or he he thought he saw a Liberator. Like that could be a reason because. I just don't entirely see what the purpose is going to be. It's odd to see, like, to see a mistake like this at such a high level. So I I almost don't think this is a mistake. I, there has to be a purpose that I'm not seeing. It might just be for Metavex, and I'm underestimating the ability of the Corruptor. Like I said, Solar is an absolutely fantastic Zerg player. Uh, he can make mistakes, but theoretically he's so extremely strong that I'd be surprised that he'd make a theoretical mistake like this. So I must be missing something here. Now, this bailing run by is going to head over towards the planetary. No center towers whatsoever, by the way. I think this is enough banes. Yeah, maybe. It's going to be close, actually. No, it's not going to be enough banes, is it? Uh, Lynx will have to finish up this planetary. Oh, one more shot. Ah, oh, he's going to take it out. Very, very close here. Parasitic Bomb is going to be cast on one of these medevacs. I do like Parasitic Bomb often to, to deal with these high medevac counts. But, uh, Vipers are just usually supply efficient when it comes to that right you throw down a parasitic bomb you deal a lot of damage on a couple of medevacs or you force your opponent to split but corruptors are very supply inefficient like you need a lot of corruptors to be capable of sniping medevacs it takes a long time and corruptors are expensive also in money and also in supply so yeah i'm, I'm just curious how this is going to pan out i'm really really curious how this is going to pan out we have 37 banes though we have 129 links as well and two vipers are here as well changeling still moving forward there's no fifth base currently for beyond who is going to fly over the orbital from the main base but this is quite the journey look at that that's going to be a long time i think it's going to arrive at like the the 90 minute mark or so some turrets are going to get taken out uh, tanks are in some trouble if they don't have anything to really tank for them funny that the unit is called the tank but the moment you reach it it's actually not all that tanky altogether uh, factory might end up burning down this was a really good run by out of solar by the way just kind of breaking the the backbone of, of beyond's setup at home you know, a lot of buildings are being taken out it feels like there's just a lot of vulnerabilities here in this area i see a big move coming in there's no sensor tower here to to show this coming and Corruptor trying to fly forward. This gets lifted up. Tanks are not entirely in position. Blinding Clouds dealing a lot of damage. So the Corruptors fly forward and start taking out a lot of these medevacs and doing a fantastic job at it, honestly. As these ghosts are going to get taken out as well. Tanks being completely destroyed here. This was a fantastic fight for Solar. I don't know how it was in the resources lost, but as it has crept closer and closer over the past few minutes, I think it must have been good there as well. But the real banger here, of course, is that there is no money. There's no income for Beyond. Beyond knows it, taps out, and Solar wins this game. An interesting game on a map with some extremely broken tank spots. And I'm I'm still surprised. That one fight here, I, I kind of want to go back to that. Because I feel like that was an absolute key moment in this game. And if that would have gone just slightly different, I, I really feel like that would have been something. I see. I think we've had it already at this point. Yeah, here we go. This fight. Imagine you have like three tanks over here one tank on the low ground and then one more tank over here like that feels like such a powerful setup you keep like eight marines in the back as well i don't know how this army is going to deal with this it's going to be so hard like yes there's two blinding clouds but i don't think that's enough for four high ground tanks it would have been it at least would have made this this defense a lot harder I really think this is a kind of a key moment in the game honestly it felt like there was a lot of momentum on the side of beyond and if you, if you keep your opponent busy here for longer, this marine drop can also deal more damage, right? So it really is, you know, it has, it's two positives there. 
And now this was just a massive negative with a lot of tanks going down. But it doesn't matter as the game has ended. That is going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you so much and bye bye.